Right, back in the shed again with Ollie Beckinsale. Back to back. Yeah, we've got uh, Nova, or should I say Novia Mesto Namorave. I always pronounce that wrong. But Warner's done it, uh, pronounced it very well over the weekend. He's a pro, mate. He is, <laughs> exactly that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, another round of the Cross Country World Cup. Uh, some great racing from the Czech Republic, which we'll get into in a second. But definitely um, some exciting results, some big results for a lot of people, actually. Yeah, yeah. Starting on Friday with the short track was was great race. A lot of spectators there as well for this race, Czech Republic. It always gets a big, big crowd. And you can see, I mean, it's one of the few races where they, I mean, it's a big um, cross-country ski. They're uh, new in the winter. Right, okay. So they've got that big stadium already built up. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? We've got that sort of tarmac finish with that rise yeah. almost. You see so that's what they do. I've watched, I've watched a bit in winter biathlon racing. That's where okay. they come in and do the yeah. shooting and bits and bobs. Yeah, it's huge. Um, you must have raced there a lot over the years. Yeah, a couple of times. So it started as a venue, I think, 2011. I think that'll be the first time we okay. raced there. Yeah. And I managed to have my biggest injury on that course. So yeah, I, I, I hate the bloody place, frankly. But <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that. So it's, it is a technical place. Maybe they've mailed it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's, a, you, I mean, it's very natural. So it's in a massive yeah. woodland and it's just, there's not a square meter without like loads of roots. Um, and then they, what they've done is over the years, they've just developed more tech sections they've built in. But the overall, it, everything is technical. So if you just had all the natural trails, there's roots, big roots everywhere. It's pretty rocky. There's some puncture type rocks everywhere. And then they've added a load of tech stuff as well. So it's gone. Yeah, it's really difficult. Well, we saw some mechanicals. We saw, I don't remember many crashes actually, to be fair, but definitely mechanicals. And then you've got that tarmac finish, which is pretty dramatic as well uh, for a lot of the races. Yeah, finish. and they built that little fun pump track in as well everyone's just cruising around that through the start finish straight yeah and that is the only place that you can really relax everything else you're on the gas well, i was actually surprised to see how hard a vanderpool was going on that near the end of the race jumping things in the middle of that was quite impressive to be fair yeah there was little gaps appearing and i think people were like keen to keep them yeah um so that's you you injured yourself at nova Mesa, did you yeah it was back in you know no, down where they've got the, the big cannondale jumps now um, that used to be a big old natural descent into a horrible, where it's a nice, that big fast berm. Yeah. That used to be a horrible route, like more routes you can imagine. And the same thing we're talking about. So I lost it on the last lap. So you're getting into that last hour and a half and you're just getting really puffed out and making mistakes. And I wrote, it was wet when we rode it as well. So it's dead slippery. I bet it's horrible and it's that right. type of course where last 20 minutes, when you're not quite right, this is sort of course that will catch you out. Like those rock gardens, I mean, you saw them, they're, they're huge and you've yeah. got to be on the ball. And last lap, you make mistakes. That's when you see the flat tyres coming, the crashes. Yeah, so I had a proper one. Yeah. We saw it, I think, in the women's race, cross country race, which we'll get to in a minute. But I think it was pretty decisive. One of those tech climbs where obviously they're, they're super tired at the end of the yeah. race and people were getting off and running and things happen to bikes. Uh, but we'll kick it off with the short track. Um, yeah, it looked like a super fast track. Obviously, the laps are only taking a couple of minutes. Yeah. And a lot of good racing going on. There are the bikes as well, a lot of full suspension bikes, semi-slick tyres. Yeah, so this was definitely, last week you saw it was steep climbing and a bit more trail centre. So a lot of people were on hardtails, flipping to a few droppers, but hardtail mainly. And this week it flipped the other way. I think every, I didn't see any hardtails when yeah, I was, I'm I sure think it was all, for, all fullies. Again, a mix of dropper posts again. But it was, they were lucky in the fact that it was this week, obviously, it stayed dry-ish. I think they had a bit of dampening down. I think down, it had but been wet the week before. But actually, Bart uh, Renton's on Red Bull saying how uh, those grassy bits, uh, it was actually really soft. So apparently, it was, that was really hard work. So they just obviously from the rain, not rolling very fast. So actually, the bits that even looked quite flat were pretty hard work. So. Yeah, there's loads of false flats on that course. So you head up a climb, and then over the top, you're still having to produce quite a bit of power. And that's when you see... The, the gaps appear so people might get up a climb following somebody but it's that little bit over the top before the next descent okay. where they where it's tough work got to stay on the ball stay on the ball the whole way well it's funny a few years ago well more than a few years ago now, actually uh we did a video uh nino Schurter and mark beaumont at yeah. lenzerheide okay so we tried to time the downhills to see what if mark had just come off winning world cup downhill so you know you think oh, it's got to be as yeah. fast or faster than nino on the downhills but he wasn't he was slower everywhere and actually, it was because he was entering the downhills much slower than Nino. So Nino was going over the top of these climbs and just bombing in and probably making, you know, a second or two actually on the very first part of the downhills as well. So it's yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, and it's that bit when you come in, obviously, if you've that level of fitness, you come in, if you've come in gassed on the climb, 
yeah you bumble we all know that and that's where enduro racing is hard you know it's, it's not just your tech skill yeah. it's how fresh you're coming into that section it's so being able to ride when you're absolutely going you're, you can't concentrate on anything yeah and we saw that last week when neff got a job dropped on the climb um and she's a better descender a little bit than courtney but she yeah. dumped it on a sh corner because she was probably breathing a bit too hard pushing a bit hard yeah. and then you make a silly mistake right. so i've seen a few uh, funny videos in last week of roadies trying to have you seen those up on popping up on facebook no i haven't no. viral like one roadie a guy racing absolutely terrible like one side of the road to the other like wobbling around and like doing 50 pence pieces and i oh, think in a race yeah 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 it was quick step he was, was he was winning i think it might be staying in the jira or something yeah, but yeah it must have been yeah yeah he wasn't great I, w I must have been because it can't have been that bad, surely. I, think I, don't know. It, I don't know if he was absolutely blown. Yeah, yeah. makes you wonder. They can't be that bad. <laughs> no, most of them are pretty good. Okay, so to the women's short track, it started off with Annie Lass pushing the pace, actually. For she was, I spoke to Tom last, her brother, last week, uh, who said uh, she was ill for the race over in Alpstadt. So she's obviously trying to come back and push yeah, the yeah, pace yeah, in the yeah. short track. And she was looking really good, actually. Yeah, I mean, it was a different circuit to last week faster but you know less hilly in some respects a yeah. few, few more techie features some big rollers and stuff so better course i think yep uh annika langvad again a story of sort of being pushed out against the barriers nothing much going on for annika we saw on one of those climbs she went out of the sort of fire road onto the soft grassy bit to try and overtake some people and it, it didn't seem to work for her no i mean it's, it's those short tracks it's it, again it's about position even if it's only 30 40 people if, if you're not on that line and you move off you know you've got to have some amazing power to go past people right. so obviously yeah there's there's not the full field from the cross-country race you have to almost qualify to be in the short track race in the first place yes yeah and then from the short track there's points to be made this is a world uh, cup win as well yeah it is forget. yeah yeah no it's a big thing big thing for sponsors as well yeah um and i and i think eventually it's, it's adding that second discipline so i don't know i don't know the plans simon bernie at uci will probably tell us better but whether there's a world champs for that Okay. Um, or whether it will become an Olympic discipline in its own yeah. right, I presume, is might be something on the plans. I don't know. He'll probably tell me that. Yeah, we'll have to ask him. That'd be great. Um, but, and then a lot of points as well for the overall. So half as many points as the actual cross-country race yes. on the Sunday. Yeah, and you saw in the women's, so Chloe Woodruff had a great ride. Yeah, brilliant. That's a win. You know, that's, exactly. a, that's a World Cup win. And she's getting her sponsors in front of everyone, like you say. So yeah, yeah. it's definitely worth having. Yeah, it's not to be sniffed at, for sure. Um, yeah, so I was about to say that. So Courtney was up there, definitely at the front. Uh, but Chloe Woodruff sprinted off. Um, and Woodruff had a 13 second gap. The laps were two minutes long, so pretty sizable. Um, Neff and Courtney were jumping side by side. And I think that could be almost a metaphor for the whole year because it looks like they are the two players, really, this year so far. Yeah, and you see how you saw, I mean, it started becoming a bit more road orientated. So there's a lot of drafting and people don't want to commit. And it right. becomes just like a circuit race. And sometimes someone just makes a kind of a lucky move. Not a lucky move, you know, she's still on a race. But you sometimes roll the dice and hope that the big guys all look at each other. Um, and they did. So she gets a gap and then they keep looking at each other. Yeah, so really, Kate Courtney, she's just got a sort of mark, you land an F. Um, yeah, there's some marking going on, no one wants to commit, everyone's thinking about Sunday, a little bit saving energy. Yeah. And then it gives the opportunity in, in a fast race with drafting for somebody to go for it, and she definitely yeah, yeah, take advantage. took advantage of that, for sure. Yeah, so Chloe Woodruff, uh, another American, American rider winning uh, races this year, so very interesting to see that. Annie last second place. Yeah, she smashed the sprint. They Looking were all... super powerful, isn't she? Yeah, that was that was some sprint she took. Yeah, really cool. Uh, so yeah, it sprinted Neff. Uh, Courtney was right there as well, and Pauline Fran Prevot in fifth. Yeah, she... slowly. You know, she's obviously injury in the winter, operation in the winter, coming back. Good first round. Another short track now, which is good. So front row grid. Yeah. So she's coming back round. I think you'll see her get better every race now. I think. Yeah, Linda in the grand with on Dean Reader. Uh, yeah, super fun, uh, fast race. Am Tauber was eighth. Uh, Rebecca McConnell ninth, which was something, you know, a bit of a, uh, maybe a marker of what was to come on Sunday. It's an impressive ride there. Yeah, and again, there's a couple of people. Uh, Bellamina, who was second last week, not such a great short track. Yeah, she's, she's more of a climber, not so powerful. Yeah, she does look like a smaller rider. Yeah, she's a bit more old school mountain bike, I think. So. Yeah. But yeah, she um, she was one of the losers a little bit in that one. Um, and then from Emily Batty as well last week, she didn't have a great round one. Yeah. And again, she was in the short track, but again, 
lower down the field, so she didn't manage to jump her grid up forward for the main race. So. Yeah, Emily Batty, 24th. Uh, Annika Langvad, 15th, so she made it, but again, not great. No, no, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's really tough having these back-to-back -back races. Mm. So two back-to-back, -back, whatever you've come in with the first one, there's not a lot you can do in the week. Yeah, you are true. black. If you have a, a bad race one, you know, health-wise or, or leg-wise, you are you're going to struggle to get come round in a week, you know. Um, what have we got? We've got a little while. Uh, Andorra is the sixth or seventh of July, so a little bit of time. Yeah, it's time for to people to reset. These yeah. two are on their own, and if you were looking for an overall, and these two went badly, that's gone now. You right. know, you're not going to come back from that. You just got to reset, and it. But the but the pressure builds. Yeah. So you get some people who've got bad form, and then it, the the big situation they've got now is for her is you know it might be a health thing or it could just be form. Mm. Do you rest or do you train? Yeah, and it's a really difficult call to make sometimes. I've one. never been in the position that I've ever been close to overtraining. But have I, you not? I don't think so. <laughs> not I can believe. I, it's hard to understand. I know I've done it. I've trained with heart rate and power and all those things. Yeah. And sometimes when I used to train for enduro, I'd be out on a road ride and just feel that I wasn't there. Sometimes you could ride through it and you'd feel good. And sometimes I think, right now, I feel really tired now. I'll back off on this. Yeah, so I don't think I've ever got to the point where I've really, really over. So these World Cup cross country guys, they're on that edge the whole time. Okay. You know, and, and sometimes it can be one session. It's that you're not much on the edge. It can be one interval session. Right. When you're knackered. Yeah. And you do a, ba a high intensity session on bad legs and you and you it puts you over it's right it's right on it and it can take a while to come back for something like that as well yeah especially if you then make that bad call so you give yourself an easier week yeah. and then you start training because you're panicking a bit and it, actually you needed two weeks and you just compound it and then eventually you're just in a, i've had you know one year where i ruined it right whole season was affected just because you're bouncing off kind of you know immune systems a bit flat yeah and it, it, it can take a whole year sometimes and then sometimes uh, nothing ever goes quite to plan you know during a year you can get a cold and yeah. then you don't know whether to train or not sometimes you can get away with it if it's on your head or if it's on your lungs you're in trouble that's why right, yeah i mean some people if they train if you train a bit sick again it's that big thing especially something like a, an illness in february march close to the season you're not thinking quite straight and people get on the bike and train hard too soon and it can just do weird things to your body. Your immune system just goes a bit flat. But how do you know these things? I know with like, you know, your computers and things now, it'll tell you how your training load is, etc. And it can even, you know, measure your heart rate in the morning to tell you how fatigued you are. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is that accurate enough? Or do you, are these no. <laughs> there's a lot, there's, there's some things out there that can help. Um, but there's no one's invented anything yet that's tell you whether you should sit on your backside right. or whether you should really go for it. It's all still experience. That's when the coaches come in. It's really difficult as an athlete. You can't see the wood from the trees sometimes. Yeah. And that's when having a coach to really chat to, and you'll have sometimes, and we work with some athletes now, and when they've got that situation, it's almost text me in the morning okay. for, for every, every morning because they won't make a good call once they get stressed. Are they doing anything like, I'm, I've done FTP tests where they take it blood, yeah, 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 all the oxygen levels. Do you think they're doing that sort of thing as well during racing? Don't know, not that I'm aware of. It yeah. depends what level people. The level I was at, it was you know you had a doctor to work with, maybe at British Cycling oh, that you yeah. could chat we know to. About these yeah, exactly. And and um, they're always the good ones. Mate. <laughs> and then, um, but yeah, you, you all it is is just chatting. You can do some blood tests, but ultimately, it's not so obvious. Once you're sick, like yeah. really sick, then they can find out that you are. <laughs> yeah. But it's this one where it's just it's form. So somebody who can still get 15th in a short track isn't sick sick. True, yeah. You know, they're not lying in bed with flu. They're just not quite right. Annika Langford, uh, 22 minutes, 22 seconds. And the winner, Chloe Rudolph, 22 and 8 seconds. So yeah. she's only, you know. It's just not quite, somebody's not quite right. Yeah. Uh, it's, and, and, and it's a difficult one to come around for. And then you've got plans. So most people after these World Cups would have planned a block of training now. Okay. So that's all in their calendars. They might be going to altitude. They might be going to a place to enjoy or just going home to recoup. But they've got training planned. So, um, yeah, it's putting that on hold to rest is tough call. That. So they've got over a month. And, yeah, the next round and or it is at altitude. So you yeah, yeah, do yeah. hear about them. People, people going up there now, virtually, after the race. Yeah, the good training block. And, again, at altitude, that's another stress. Like managing training and racing at altitude is a real skill. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, and, and, and some people respond to altitude, some people ride badly, naturally. So it's a real mix. Yeah. Uh, did you see Matthew Vanderpool actually racing short track, was wearing a heart rate monitor? 
Okay. It was quite interesting. Um, what would be your heart rate for a short track race? Through the roof. I think it would just be... <laughs> it would tell you that it's through the roof and you're trying real hard. So, yeah, and no, I don't know how much feedback you'll get from that. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. It seems sometimes a little bit old school now for races to yeah. be looking at heart rate. but people, A lot of people still do. Yeah. yeah. I think they've... Because they've used it for so long, it's just something that they... It's just what they do when they race. Okay. Um, personally, I didn't. He didn't wear one, it didn't look like one for the cross country race, but for short track he was. Um, yeah, maybe just feed, a, bit, a little bit of feedback to rein it in, maybe at the start. Maybe. Yeah, we could see that live if Red Bull could have it on the screen, see what his heart rate is doing yeah. through the race. A few stats, I mean, they do it on the road, they have power and heart rate up yeah. on the stats. Yeah, that that cool. would be a cool thing to do. But you see, um, Nino did, from the first round, he put some stuff out on social media with his powers. Yeah. for the race that was interesting you know if you're into that sort of stuff if you're not obviously it'd be boring as hell but <laughs> but it, it, if, if you're a bit of a geeky one like me and you look at it and you're like oh, it, you could see the numbers and correlate and it was crazily hard i i can imagine so going back to that race he did with Mark beaumont he gave us all his gopro but he also gave me his strava file with all his power and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's still actually on my strava so i've got a lot of koms around that cross country track good skills I, <laughs> <laughs> which i need to delete of course but yeah he was not shy about giving us his stats which was really yeah, good yeah. Of him. super helpful for us pretty impressive again yeah uh so the men's short track these starts look super awkward. There's a bit of a false start. Did you see that? So I think yeah, that was weird. Someone clapped or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. And they didn't really make them line up again. And no, then they all went. Boom, gone. Yeah, it looked random, didn't it? <laughs> like school cross country or something. Yeah. I wonder if that gets you sort of flustered a little bit at the start. Oh, um, that would, I mean, some guys went, put their foot down. Yeah. And they went to go, oh, that'd be awful. Yeah, you'd be all over the place. Um, we saw Andrew Frischnecht sort of overshoot the jump. It's a bit of an awkward looking section and then go down and almost take out Nina. Well, not almost. It was, yeah, it was close enough, I wonder. Yeah, well, that would have been pretty embarrassing, I suppose, if you'd taken out your superstar teammate. Yeah, not great. And your dad is the team manager. I think you'd get away with it, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> He's not going to get the P45 for that, yeah. is he? Get a fine. <laughs> Go no, no uh, supper tonight. To to uh, no last Fo Forster uh, injured, the knee injury. Yeah, after that nightmare first round he had, yeah. Yeah. Real shame. <laughs> uh, so, Adam Senior and Cooper went on lap four. Uh, Vanderpool started the chase, catching them, and then just went straight past them. Yeah, again, he puts that turbo on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, it just like in round one, just absolutely smack. I mean, he puts that no one can follow, and yeah. he's doing he's doing that already at a, a twenty minute high intensity pace. That's his skill. I mean, that's how he's been winning some road races recently. That's how he wins his cross races. Yeah, it's, 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 hold it. Yeah. So crazy. yeah, Nino chased him. Then Matthew went again. So he had five laps to go. So it's just basically a time trial for over ten minutes. Yeah. I have no idea. You know, I've ridden, done lots of training sessions where you sit on a turbo trainer and two minutes feels like a long time to be going hard. Yeah. How do you do it thinking, well, I've got five laps left. I've gone now. Yeah, I, it's he's, it's almost, he's almost playing with that a bit. I mean, you, it's, I mean, if you're going to get away, you get away. But to hold people and have a small gap around there, with quite a lot of drafting on that course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's super strong. I mean, it's, I don't know whether it's a confidence thing, getting in people's heads so you can just do that. It shows people it means business, obviously. Oh, it's mental. I mean, that was, yeah. It's, uh, especially when you think he's doing that Friday and pe some people in that field are thinking about saving their legs and he's smashing his to bits. Yeah, so. it does make you wonder. Flukiger sort of sat in the pack a little bit. Yeah, um, he's riding real smart again. Yeah. Yeah, minimum energy. He rode a good race last week and he's riding a good one in the short track. Yeah, finished 12th. Um, we saw Sink, obviously. He's the chat rider, sort of showing his face in the race. Um, but Matthew Vanderbilt took it, took maximum points. Maxim Marat was second. Actually, the times are exactly the same because it got pretty close at the end. Yeah, Vanderbilt yeah, yeah. Backed it off. A bit of showboating. Yeah. Um, Avantini third, Nino Schert fourth, Carlos Coloma fifth, actually. Yeah, yeah. So Vanderpool was undefeated in short track so far. Um, saying so far, actually, he said that he's not doing the next couple of races. So yeah, I heard that, yeah. He's yeah. got to have a little break, which kind of makes sense. I mean, we were talking about that knife edge bit and blowing yourself apart i mean he already breaks the rules yeah already of okay. what you can do without does, a real break so when does um the cross season start because he's been racing cross all year late september early I october yeah before mountain literally there's not there's not a lot of gap between and, the end of the mountain yeah and it, I, yeah he did 32 something races in the year yeah and it is flat out they have li tiny little breaks little micro breaks where they can grab a week of more base okay. training during the winter for cross but 
it, generally it's pretty flat flat out the whole way through do they race in the week as well I know in Belgium sometimes in a week yeah double weekends right. it's it's a busy time for them but I mean it's big business there it's huge you know it's, it's bigger well that's what's so cool about Vanderpool racing mountain bikes I think he, he definitely doesn't need to he's such a big star in cross and the road world that to see him racing and throwing his cars on the de- on the table for mountain biking is super cool to see yeah he, want, he wants that gold medal in Tokyo he wants to win mountain bike and it's do it. It's great. He's not the sport at the moment. He's one part of it, but it is great for the sport that he's doing what he's doing on the road, cross and mountain bike, and he's seeing them all as a level. Yeah. And I think it's helping, put, especially he's helping cross country mountain bike getting the recognition it needs at the moment. It's, yes, we've seen obviously Giro d'Italia is the biggest thing in cycling at the moment, and I've seen lots of people on Twitter talking more about the mountain bike World Cup of the weekend than they are about the Giro. So definitely bringing all sides of cycling to you know, their eyes to watch mountain bike at the moment. Yeah, yeah, he's he's the, he's he's the boy in cycling, and whatever race he's doing that week is going to get some expert, is really good coverage. Yeah. So when he's at the mountain bike race, that will trump the Giro, I think, that day. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's, it, I saw him hit his computer button straight after the finish line as well when he won that short track race. So he's definitely looking at something. That, that Strava file is going to be pretty good, I'd imagine. Yeah, we through the roof. <laughs> so, right, so on Sunday's race, uh, start with women. Uh, Neff and Tauber looking strong to begin with. Uh, nine seconds to Courtney. Annie Last had a problem by it, so she dropped two minutes. Batty was two minutes back early on. So Batty's not having a great season so far either. no and again we said before you get on the back foot so even if your form's good you know bad race whether it's mechanical or bad start or bad short track it's really difficult to get that grid back up yeah and then you get under a lot of pressure i mean the start loop at nova mesto is, is it's a decent start loop it's quite wide for quite a while but there's a limit of how how much you can move up and if you do try to move up, you're riding on the sides and you risk flat tyres, you go slow, etc. So You're burning, yeah, you go to the red as well, I suppose. Yeah, and then, and then you're into a, there's a forest track climb, which is only three or four bikes wide, and then you're into the course proper, which is a big single track, so that's single file. So there's a massive bottleneck at the top of there. So if you're 30th going in there, you've lost a minute instantly. That must be so frustrating. To yeah, and to it's stressful because you're absolutely flapping your heart rate you're stood in a single track yeah but your heart rate's going race pace still so <laughs> yeah. it's not you know it takes you got to have to be pretty brave to relax have a drink and let it sort itself out you, most people are flapping um yeah sign of fray up there as well um actually we saw kate courtney lose 20 seconds or at least it looked like 20 seconds but it turns out she's got a puncture so 20 seconds must be in a flipping quick changed yeah fair. that's yeah super quick with through axles and stuff so lucky lucky where it happened she must have had it pretty close to the pit yeah or whether she was managed to use a gas canister whether it was a slow or something and pumped it back up i don't yeah, know okay. but yeah so it's not a lot to lose yeah uh Tybo was pushing hard so we saw her have a really good ride last week Alstat, but unfortunately crashed and seemed to almost ruin her race really she dropped from second with up with kate courtney back to fourth yeah but she's looking really good this year yeah, and they were having a real battle. Obviously, she was stronger on the climbs. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to see, and you could see that course in two parts. So she was taking four or five seconds out of Neff on every climb. Neff, again, was absolutely pinning the descent. Four minute, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, visibly quicker. There was that drop, which yeah. they always film from the bottom, and you drop on in, and it, it that's pretty gnarly on a cross-country bike. And she was coming in, it bombing it, and everyone else was kind of rolling over it a bit. Yeah, so she was sort of... Happy to sit behind, really, and lose a little bit and then catch it back up, it looked like, to be fair. And then later on in the race, Neff went to the front. I wonder if she was saying, you know, watch this. I think now she was trying to hold it up a bit. Oh, yeah, right, okay. yeah, just trying to, you know, you, you can try and roll the climb, mm-hmm. hope that person will sit behind, and then you can flip it the other way and gain eight seconds on the descent rather than have to close it. So yeah, I think there was a bit of that going on. Okay. Uh, it, it looked to me actually one time where Neff was going up that technical climb uh, and it looked like her seat was quite low. I don't know if she dropped it on purpose to try and move around the yeah, bike. Sure. Bit, she or... sits pretty low in the saddle, okay. Generally, um, but yeah, and she's yeah, she spin spins a really easy gear. Yeah, you can really see the difference, can you, in cadence? But yeah, Tauber looked awesome. Looked yeah, really yeah. strong, composed. Still descent. She wasn't descending slow, just not as fast enough. But she was riding. Say, she looked pretty good, to be fair. Yeah, really strong. Um, mm. She what Bart saying? She does ice skating in winter. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, <laughs> two hundred kilometer. Yeah, bonkers <laughs> skating. Uh, so Kate Courtney had to do some chasing. Really, she was down twenty four seconds at one point. Twenty four seconds, 
would she know that? Would she have people shouting that? Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'd you'd notice. But and on that course, you can see a, quite a chunk, yeah. especially in that start finish straight. It doubles back on itself, and you can see see a good gap. And then I think it's great because it was only at twenty four, or that sort of time. You you can still see people, and on the long climb, you could see them. And if it, once they are out of sight, it really messes with your head a bit. But the fact you can keep them in sight makes a really big difference. So that was lap three. Would that be concerning for Kate Courtney to be down that much? It's not ideal. I think if you know you've had a mechanical, okay. you can get your head around that better. Yeah. There's a reason. If you're just being dropped, yeah, a little tougher. Different, yeah. Okay, lap four, Kate Courtney up to Neff and pretty much straight past. And it looked like Neff blew up a little bit. Yeah, she. I think she was working hard to stay with Tauber. Yeah, right. You're probably overcooking it a little bit. So yeah, she was just paying the price. And again, there's no recovery around there. So you have a bad lap, you can't blag it. Yeah. You go, you go a little slow. Uh, Rebecca McConnell as well, looking really good. Yeah, uh, again, smooth nice. race. Yeah. Um, so Taib had 17 at that point over Kate Courtney, and then there's 33 back from Tabor to McConnell and Yolanda Neff. So you know, 16 seconds back from Kate Courtney. So she sort of sat by herself. For a little while kate courtney next lap she brought that down to seven seconds so she took 10 seconds in a lap out of tauber and then it looked like the race was going to be on uh fry overtook neff for fourth so again neff going a little bit backwards and then it came to tauber and kate courtney on that tech climb it looked a bit nervous yeah so they were obviously both super going hard in the red and it's really hard and they were sliding around a little bit back tires spinning up and i think that's what caused the problem um, Tiber's chain looked like it came off, or we didn't see it in fact, but sort of Tiber disappeared. And that was that. Yeah, we got round to that long technical climb where you can see right up it, and then she'd gone, disappeared. You could hear Bart, who's a team manager, sort of a bit nervous about what had happened, but obviously it must have been a problem with the bike. Yeah, he did a good job to stay cool when his yeah. riders just bombed out a <laughs> potential win. So both of them were off on that climb, and it's easy to get off and you're halfway through changing gear or something, and the cranks just spin backwards and chain off. Yeah, but it's, as we were saying before, it's a tech course all the way around. And when that last lap, when you're getting tired, that's when you make the mistakes. You're a bit stiff on the bike. You're not changing gear. You're changing gear on the obstacle, not before it. You're just not thinking quite straight. And that's when the problems happen. Yeah, I'm guessing more often than not, it is sort of rider error rather than... Pure yeah, you wouldn't do it on lap one. You yeah, know, you just do it on lap six when you're just, you're not 100%. Yeah, so Kate Courtney then. You know, it was really unfortunate for Tabor. Uh, bad luck again. But Kate Courtney took another win. So really you know, racking up the points this year. Looking super strong on that Scott team. Yeah. And again, she rode a really, she had a flat tyre. Didn't flap. Just got back on. Slowly brought the gap back. Yeah. And like race one, a really confident race. She's, she's yeah, not just in a physical shape. Mentally, she's on it at the moment. Yeah. I, and I think it will, you know, obviously be, I think Yolanda Neff is still looking good, but. I mean, Kate Courtney looks not unbeatable. You can't say unbeatable, I don't think, this early in the season, but super strong. Yeah, very strong. Um, yeah, Rebecca McConnell second. Hayley Smith third. Good ride for her. Yeah, she really just came through own pace and, yeah. and came through at the back end. Uh, and then a couple of young riders, sort of Sina Frey, the under-23 uh, winner from last year, and Melaine Dagan, uh, who is 23 years old. First year again at Elite and with her first podium, fifth place. Yeah, it's good to see a good mix up in people. Uh, you land an F8, Pauline Fran Provo, ninth. Another good ride, solid. Yeah. Uh, Tabor finished 10th, unfortunately. For uh, Jenny Rizvedz was racing. Yes, yeah. Ama third. Again, amazing race. 33rd from being unseeded, I guess, you know, being pretty far back on the start. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, from Olympics, it's had a couple of issues in the last couple of years, which she wanted to take some time off to kind of you know find the love for it again which she's found and came back but again to move up from the gridding she was in yeah. basically un unsgridded yeah. essentially to move back up to that place that is quite an amazing so result. yeah let me think it's well when was olympics 16 16 so yeah she's not been around for a little while now yeah um yes yeah, olympic champion and world champion that year and lots of sort of factors made her want to move away from riding it's great to see her sort of doing it for the right reasons now did you see the thing on red bull um, i haven't no. it's really good talking about why she's doing it and the sort of motivation for coming back to racing it's really impressive actually all to do with getting kids uh in, doing recreation basically Brilliant. So definitely good reason yeah no, it's so. good to have a different reason rather than just <laughs> yeah, yeah it can be quite selfish, winning I suppose. yeah yeah <laughs> winning is why i want to race <laughs> right so on to the men's it, there was a lot of talk 
uh, before the race about how Nino had been so successful at Nova Mesto. Six wins there before th- last three in a row. Yeah. So all eyes were on Nino. Yeah, and, and he publicly said how much he loves the track. And yeah, he's, uh, it's yeah. his place, really. Um, yeah, full suspension bikes, obviously. Uh, return of Sam Gaze. We've not seen him at the first round. Um, again, from that head injury, that yeah, that um, concussion he took at the Cape Epic. Um, so Vanderpool uh, went out hard again. They always seem to go out hard, these guys, but definitely on start lap, him, Amcini and Schurter going. Yeah, it was hard. interesting to see whether Schurter didn't have the legs or had lost that little bit of confidence. He wanted to sit in a little bit this time. Yeah. So, you know, other years he's just gone, right, everyone's going to you know, yeah. take a hard first lap. Yeah, watch this. Whereas this time I think he was, and that's that's from last week, you know, it's just taken the edge off him. And he said, oh, I better uh, ride a slightly smarter race today, I think. Yeah, and, and it worked. It's obviously, it won't, we'll talk about the end in a minute, but it seemed to work better this week for him. Um, yeah. Yeah, there was lap five, there was Van der Poel, uh, Nino on one minute, uh, Sink, and then 20 seconds to the group. So Andre Sink, the Czech rider, obviously he wanted to sh- do a good performance. In front yeah, of and he's ridden round there previously. So he was on when Marita had the big team. Okay, he, yeah. he, was, um, he was racing for that one. That, and then he went to the road for a year yeah. um and then yeah i mean he, he had a really good road year and he ended up riding from a first year road pro rode the tour de france and had some great results in some of the mountain stages but i think yeah i don't know him but from he said he fell out with a, you know he preferred the mountain bike and has come back which is great yeah um but yeah no he's he's ridden around there before he's had podiums there but yeah the crowd as well it's mental and he was a, and he is the main check with no cool harvey in it yeah, true. He's he's the he's the man. So, yeah, it's cool to see that full-on stadium in front of the the yeah, and the little one in the woods where the big big rock techie garden and he yeah. built a big stadium area in there as well. It's yeah, it's cool. That looks gnarly, especially like we're saying, you know, the last couple of laps when yeah, people are really getting tired. It's got a couple of lines down it, but it's not they're not obvious lines. But yeah, no, if you crash in there, you'll know about it. Actually, Neff punctured, didn't she? I think it might have been in that section where she sort of lost those places near the end of the race. Yeah, and they were pinning it through there. There was yeah. no brakes. Yeah, so Neff it was a rear flat as well, wasn't it? So it took a little bit of time to get her bike sorted. Bit of a shame. Um, yeah, so lap five we saw in the men's race, Matthew Van der Poel. Uh, again, Nino back a little bit. And then lap six, the group caught sink. Um yeah, fucking good. And then Marot seemed to drop a little bit. Did you see that? Yeah, he was he was the weaker in that group. But again, flicking a road, riding a really clever race. You know, he realised he didn't have the legs yeah. to go with Shooter and Van der Poel. And especially from winning race one, you'd think, well, actually, he might, he might be overconfident, maybe give it a go. But he, he rode again his own race uh, and came through and got, I think he got the best position he was going to get. True which he did in the first race. In the first race, that exactly. best position was a win. In this one, it was third. But that Imp- overall... Impressive. ...is looking, you know, he's doing his own thing. He's not getting caught up with, you know, shooting Van der Poel doing their own thing. Um, and he's just picking up, he, you know, f- as an overall contender, mm. two races in, he's had a first and a third. Yeah, yeah he's looking good. pretty solid. Um, so, yeah, Fumic, did you see he punctured? It looked like his wheel was bent or something. I don't know where he'd done that, but pretty damaged by the looks of it. Uh, and Van der Poel and Nino, at one point, were 1 minute and 40 up on third place. Yeah, they were. Uh, yeah, they were in another league. <laughs> they, were, they were absolutely beasting each other in parts. And then the crazy thing is, in some patches, they looked like they were cruising. Well, it's the last lap, Van der Poel looked like, right, this is it, I'm chilling now. And yeah. then, boom, he went. I'm- yeah, so lap five, he put in some digs yeah and six lap six shooter was trying especially on the long climb okay and then on the false flat and he was pulling some faces <laughs> and he, you could tell he was maxed yeah. yeah he was like there wasn't a lot there you know, a couple of times he maxed looked round, yeah and then was like oh it's done oh, nothing oh dear oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then when Vanderpool actually went for it he got 15 seconds i can't believe how quickly he did it it well, mental. Not, sure, it just like right. Nah, that's it. I can't. I don't think he could respond. I think he just yeah. and then he just cracked. Yeah. It was. It was again an insane attack. Pretty incredible. Looked, yeah, to turbo off like that after an hour and a half. I know he looks just fresh. Like oh, here we go. Boom. Watch this. Yeah, have it. No, I mean that was yeah mental. Yeah. Well, on, um, on, on a kind of false flat fire road, just yeah. booted it and off he went. Clearly, just a step ahead that day. Um, yeah. Yeah, took the win easily in the end. Uh, Nino Schurter second. Yeah, and he seemed happy. 
He did. Yeah, I saw a comment afterwards. Yeah. It was social stuff saying that he's the best he's felt since Cape Epic. Yeah. Okay. So he's happy. Now he can kind of say, you know, now he wouldn't have said it probably first round. He's probably hoping. He's also quite happy probably that Matty Vanderpool is disappearing. <laughs> So yeah, exactly. But yeah, it was quite telling. Said so my bet, best I felt since Cape Epic. Yeah, and then I think that's uh, so the Cape Epic big stage race, South Africa, at the start of the year. Yeah, really, really tough. Really tough. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I didn't ride it. I had opportunity to ride it when I was racing a few times, and I didn't because I was scared, <laughs> scared of the event and how it would affect. I think it's a big risk. Right. Okay. It's a big race in itself now, so you can't go there and just ride around for fun yeah absolutely and i it. think it's so tough it can make or break your early season right that we keep talking about it. well people keep suggesting it to us here and i don't mind a challenge but i look at it and think i can't do that i would need you don't fancy doing it as a pair mate well i would like to do it <laughs> but i would i don't think <laughs> is that I, an offer i could find the time well blake was like blake will say yes to everything and blake's like i'll do it and I'm like dude it is you're quite strong but i don't think it is rock art yeah yeah i mean well no, I'm not sure I do want to do it. It's very hard. No. Well, I remember I was racing with Giant and Bart Brenchens used to like doing it. He was the main man. He's super strong and he trains yeah. in his recovery. He's, he's a big guy. Yeah. Can you come and do the Cape Epic with me? I had to get and worm my way out of that one pretty quick. He would have just smashed me around South Africa for a week. I know. I mean, the idea of doing something like that, especially as a pair, like, I, what's better? Do you want to be the guy who's a bit stronger so you can chill a bit or are you going to get wound up or do you want to be that person who's not as strong and get beasted for a week? The strong one. Every day of the week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that week, a week of ride around South Africa for a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bungee cord around Bart Brench and seat post wasn't my idea of a great march. <laughs> I almost did a 24-hour race with uh, Nick Craig, actually, which uh, unfortunately I've hurt myself before. But Oh, funny that, yeah. You played <laughs> that card. <laughs> I rode my road bike into the front of a car. Was, oh, that's a pretty extreme excuse. It was eh? a bit extreme, but <laughs> that's way it was to still get out easier it. than riding around Sweden with Nick Craig. For a week. Although Nick's a great guy. <laughs> Not sure how much fun it would have been. Uh, so, yeah, Nino Seca, Matthias looking a third. Great result for him. Although it definitely shows... To me, Nino, it is, looks like he's back on form because he really beat the rest of the crew by a long way. Yep. Uh, so, you know, what's going to happen in Andorra? Uh, Avancini fourth, uh, Andre Sink in fifth. Um, yeah, what were we thinking? For obviously, Kirchbaumer's. Yeah, he, better race. Yeah, he he seventh. Through, yeah, off, off a reasonably bad, relatively bad gridding. Yeah. So he came back through. He rode really strong, and there was this big group. I mean, it looked cool. He had the front two, then a group of three or four that are having a bit of a scrap. Then this group of like 10 guys yeah. and they were like in the back end of the race still fighting out with 10 people for top 10 places and there was some really good new riders Andre Frischnet has got ninth. yeah off rim Saru 10th that was yeah him. still yeah still a good race I mean that's yeah. that's if I think his first race was a particularly good one yeah right. but I think if he's banging out top 10s as a young guy yeah great with that yeah. sort of guys that's what what you're after really Anton Cooper down in 16th um, yeah just swinging right. a bit and there's a couple of like Florian Vogel who was top five first race yeah 26 he, yeah I don't know if he had a flat or an issue or just flat legs I'm not sure yeah sort of going through another, again another big field I think it's sort of 140 riders there 10 PA down in 47th um, yeah. yeah there was a few that you would expect but then there's this huge group of new guys like I said that group that were racing from 7th to 17th yeah, a load of young guys in there and fresh blood and guys that aren't on big teams yet, all really scrapping for it. It was good to see. So, yeah, no Vanderpool for the, at least the next two rounds, I think he said. So probably back for Val de Sol and Lanzerheide, both of them in August. And then it doesn't sound like he's doing snowshoe either at the end. Um, so is this just preparation for... Well, he obviously wanted to get selected for Tokyo yep. next year. Yeah, that's done. I mean, he's ticked. I mean, selection is one, and then obviously he's got to win. So he's kind of you know ticked his boxes really. Now he can go off dead confident, and then he's got comp he's not chasing an overall. He's already achieved his goals yeah. by a long way. So yeah, he's on he's in the driving seat really for. He'll be just thinking of worlds now. I would have thought. Yeah. Okay. 
<clears throat> it seems a shame for him to go. Uh, it's been great to watch him ride. He's got 700 points. You feel like he could just ride around for a couple of races and still score points, but obviously that's not what he's there to do. No, he needs to go and have a little holiday, I think. He's had a, yeah, he's had a tough spring. He's earned it. So Flukko is second overall with 500 points, so 200 back. Uh, Nino is then right there with 485. So Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a big scrap. Yeah. The next two races is between... I think Nino... In the next two races, you'll see him really strong. Um, but it's for the overall, it's it's you know how many points you can actually take away from Flockinger. I think that's going to be a real scrap for the season. That one. Yeah, Maxim Marot fourth, Avancini fifth, but it looks like a you know Flockinger and Nino are the ones that are going to be battling out next round. Yeah, and then you've got a couple of the other guys. Yeah, that, that are better climbers that will come in and okay. be fighting for the race, but they're maybe not the overall. I think. Uh, ladies overall is being dominated, of course, by Kate Courtney. Yep. Worst result so far this year is a fourth at this short track this weekend. Yolanda Neff, uh, second place. So Kate Courtney, 700 points. Yolanda Neff, 490. So big jump there as well. Chloe Wood Woodruff ridden herself up to third place. Rebecca McConnell, fourth. Anna Tauber, fifth. So Tauber's still looking pretty good. Yeah, she's just had some... You, know, you make your own luck, but she hasn't had the luck. But he's smoothest of rides, you know. Yeah. That big crash in the first one, um, and then last, yesterday a mechanical issue. Um, but she'll she'll get. I think she'll have a win by the end of the season. Yeah. The way she's going, she just looks really strong, composed. We said before she, you know, speed skates two hundred kilometers. I think endurance might not be a <laughs> weak spot. <laughs> Surely you can coast a little bit if you're skating. I have no idea feels like you can just oh you're gonna get in trouble so you can coast and skate you can freeway on a bike mate <laughs> uh, absolutely true okay so yeah we've got a little break now for cross country uh next podcast is from fort william we're actually just after here um leaving you ollie and we're getting in the van yeah it's downhill time yeah chucking martin's tandem in the van and we're driving up to fort william so doing more of that tandem madness i'm not martin is yeah it's a shame we don't have a you know with the days when we used to have Fort William cross country and World Cup. They yeah, were, yeah, they, that was some good racing up there. Yeah, so. it is a shame actually. I used to love watching it when there was the two together and you could sort of hang out and watch. Yeah, it was great for us. You know, it's a, it's a it's a downhill venue really, but it was great for us as a cross country as to get in, in the good mix tracks well. there, actually. Yeah, the newer the track when we had the worlds up there, yeah. it was cool. And it was yeah, it, it was it's a shame we've lost that one, but maybe another day. Dolby popped up as a venue. Yeah took the cross country okay, from yeah. Fort William I think is to some extent mm -hmm. and they spread it around and then obviously Dolby's not a World Cup track anymore um, but it'd be great to get it back there I think at some time yeah I'd love to see it okay yeah so next podcast from Fort William next Monday but cheers Ollie we'll catch you later on in the year hopefully for next round in, in Val Nord Andorra cool cheers mate